In this video, we'll replace this old non-working battery from this UPS with lithium battery. So I have these two around 7 to 8 years old UPS. One is 600 volt ampere with 12 volt battery and the other one is 1050 volt ampere with 24 volt battery in series. Both of these old UPS batteries have lead acid batteries. I'll talk about that later on. So since this is the first time I am doing this experiment, we'll first start with the lower capacity UPS. This one has 12 volt battery, which is the old lead acid battery, which I think has been replaced multiple times already. The main issue with this lead acid battery is one, the backup time is really low and with one full desktop setup connected to it, it can only stay on for maybe five minutes or less. Also, it doesn't last long. Our area has lots of power interruptions, so we really need to have a stable UPS. So my goal in this project is to replace this lead acid battery with a much more powerful and lighter lithium batteries. So hopefully we can extend the power backup time. What we need in this project is the one for 32650 lithium batteries with the same voltage ratings. What I have here is rated at a 6000 milliamp hour. So if we connect this in series, it will give us around 12 to 13 volts and maintaining the 6 amp hours rating. So this is about 77 watt hours of power. If we apply this in a real world scenario, that's like one full charge of most laptops and around 30 minutes of power when connected to a regular desktop. What if the voltage of the batteries have a slight difference? That's I think completely okay. You can get complicated using a balancer, but we'll not do that today. Since we have the same ratings, we'll install a BMS or a battery management system which will protect our battery from overcharging and we'll do the balancing using this second component. Alright, for the BMS. This is a 4S BMS with 15 amp maximum rating. I think this is enough to handle these 4 lithium batteries. Next one is the battery holder. I thought I only needed 2 pairs. I should have bought 4 since I need to put on both ends. But anyway, I've used some double-sided tape and masking tape to keep the four cells together. Next component is instead of soldering all these four cells, I use the stabbing wires and screws to connect them together. Regarding the connections of these batteries, we'll talk about that in a bit. We also need a voltmeter and a soldering kit. I bought a kit which already includes uh, these components like soldering lead, a wire stripper, and some other components. I will leave a link in this video so you can check it. When connecting batteries, I need you to be really careful in this one. I know this is a small project but I need you to learn from me. Follow the diagram please. And you will end up like me. Yep, I know it's a very simple connection but I made a mistake of connecting the positive and the negative of both batteries. <laughs> anyway, the connection is simple. Most videos in YouTube doesn't explain this and they assume we already know. but I'll be good to you guys and explain it. One, the positive terminal of the first cell will connect to the negative of the second cell. And the positive terminal of the second cell will connect to the negative of the third cell. The positive terminal of the third cell will connect to the negative of the fourth cell. And that leaves us a negative of the first cell and a positive of the fourth cell. This is what we'll use later to connect our load. And this is where we connect our UPS. Now I checked the total voltage of our battery series and it's a total of 13.2 voltage. Let's now connect to BMS. The connection of BMS is very simple. I just follow this diagram. The B minus, the blue wire and the black wire connects to the negative of the first cell. And the first red wire next to the black wire connects to the positive terminal of the first cell. Ducky, ducky. 
the second red wire connects to the positive terminal of the second cell, and so on. So the last, the fourth cell, will have the last red wire connected to it. And also we need to solder an extra wire to it. We'll need this later on as our passive battery terminal, which will go to the passive wire of the UPS. And the black wire is our negative terminal, which will also go to the negative connection to the UPS. All right, it's time to remove the lead acid battery from the UPS. First, I remove this steel tab using regular screwdrivers. There are four screws in total and it's pretty easy to remove them. Then I detach the positive and negative wire connected to the lead acid battery. Finally, I was able to remove the tabbing bar. But wait a minute. This is the moment when I realized I made a stupid mistake. The tab wires and the batteries are open and the bottom of the UPS is conductive. So it made a freaking fire. I remember when they say women live longer than men. This is one of the example. Learn from me you guys. <laughs> this is my second failed moment in this project. I told you, this is my first time doing it. So, did I quit after this happened? Of course not. <laughs> so, after drinking some cold lemonade and not telling my wife that I almost burned the house, I went back to finish the project. I have to resolder some of the wires that got disconnected. Then I added this clipper at both ends of the positive and negative wires. So, it will be easier for me to test later on. Finally, the project is done. In case you are curious what materials I used to pack the batteries, well, I'm too resourceful. So when I saw a used damaged mouse pad and a Christmas bulbs transparent plastic box, I know this is their moment to become useful. You can use captain tape, by the way. I hear it is so much better, but I don't have one during this time, so I improvised. I clipped the wires to the correct connections positive to positive, negative to negative, and it's time to test this. What could go wrong, right? I turned on the UPS, and at last, it's working. I was waiting if there's any smoke that will come out. Thank heavens, it works just fine. Let me just turn it off for now and we will do more testing. This time, I plugged in the UPS. And there you go, it's charging normally. Now, let's turn it on. Let's unplug the UPS and see if it runs on battery. Okay, it's all good. It's time to place the battery inside the UPS. I remove first the clips because it can snap off the terminals easily. So we need a semi-permanent replacement. Since I don't have an F2 terminal uh, similar to the lead acid battery, I decided to make an improvised terminals from the tabbing wires we used for the batteries previously. Then I solder the wires to the terminals. Then I inserted it at the end of the female wires of the UBS. I cover the connections with electrical tape and place the battery inside the UPS. Ducky, ducky. 
the steel tabbing cannot cover the battery that we built so I screwed it back in and just and just masking the battery to the UPS let's put the casing back in Okay, so you might be wondering, how does the new UPS perform in real-world scenario? First, I connected the UPS to my iMac and set up a timer. Then, I unplugged the power cable of the UPS. I tested this with my 2017 21-inch 4K iMac. It runs on Intel i5, 8GB of RAM, and it boots up through an external SSD drive. So I assume that it consumes an average of about 100 to 150 watt an hour of power. And this is by the way twice the power consumption of your regular laptops. I did a regular work on this computer without leaving it on idle or putting it in sleep just to test how long it will keep on working with me doing my usual work on my computer. I'm also checking the timer from time to time. Once it reaches over five minutes, I get excited. So considering the lead acid battery only lasts for five minutes or less for most desktop computers, then it keeps on going. 10 minutes laps, and then 20 minutes, and this is amazing. Considering that I only charge this battery for an hour or less, so I wonder if it wasn't fully charged or not. The only thing that my UPS didn't do is it turns off all of a sudden without giving me a warning. And what a traitor. Usually it beeps faster a minute before it shut downs. I wonder what happened. So I get curious if the battery can still power my iMac a little bit longer or it's the feature of the UPS to auto shut down on a certain amount of time. Let me know in the comments below. Nevertheless, we come up with a conclusion that these lithium batteries, the 32650, are really good replacement for the UPS lead acid batteries. I am happy with the results. Don't forget to subscribe in my channel because in the next project, we will do another DIY lithium batteries for my other UPS. And this time, it's 24 volts. See you in the next video.